Welcome to Wild with JR, a podcast designed to help motivate others to grow by integrating practical skills, leadership principles, and teaching elements of the wilderness into our everyday lives. Now, for your host, Junior Humphrey. What's up? Welcome back, everybody. So glad you're joining us today, whether you are catching us on YouTube on the video side or you are joining us on another podcast platform. Thank you so much for being a part. Today is cool. We are going to be diving in and talking about wilderness medicine. What is the definition of wilderness medicine? What considers it wilderness medicine? Just a few things like that. We're going to dive into the wild side of wild for a little while. But um, before we dive right in, uh, I know we've been talking a lot about heavy, heavy leadership principles. And that is okay, we're going to stay on that track too, but I needed to throw a little bit of the wilderness in there. And the reason being is because we are wild with JR, integrating wilderness into our everyday lives is what we're about here. But also um, diving in and helping you understand this is going to help you understand some of the upcoming things that are about to be released here at Wild. So just stay tuned. But diving right in wilderness medicine if you have never in your life heard of wilderness medicine this is cool because i want to help open your eyes to a new side of of medical um and and medical care medical providers those such things but if you have heard of wilderness medicine you may already know this if not i'm going to give a little information to help kind of define what wilderness medicine is so Um, If you're viewing, you'll see me looking at some notes. I wanted to be very intentional about this and make sure I communicate well. So when we look at wilderness medicine, let's start with kind of an overview definition um, of what wilderness medicine is. So it is a specialized medical training that is concerned with the medical care in remote wilderness and expedition environments. And what sets this apart is the improvised care of patients with routine exotic illnesses, trauma, limited resources and manpower, and the ability to manage and maintain a patient's stabilization in these situations where there is delayed evacuation to definitive care. So just kind of sum all that up. Uh, People in the wilderness medicine field are kind of like modern day MacGyver Healthcare providers is is the easiest way to to kind of sum that up. And if you're not old enough to know who MacGyver is, look him up. MacGyver's really cool. Uh, it's kind of playing into the practical ingenuity side of some things that we'll be doing here at Wild as well. But don't want to get too far off. So wilderness medicine is just a specialized training. So what I did is I did some research. Um, I have currently hold a wilderness first responder certification and soon we'll be upgraded to a wilderness emt and then by the end of the year it will be advanced wilderness life support so um just kind of dive into those different areas so you have basic first aid you have cpr you have basic life support advanced life support we it you hear the terminology front country and back country. Front country is your your daily EMS that you see riding around in the ambulances, the people that you see in the fire trucks respond, and that is front country medical providers. Back country medical f- providers are your search and rescue people, your ski patrol, your mountain guides, those type people, your professional guide services that are all medically trained. So there's a defining line there that separates front country from back country and it'll help you understand kind of where we're going with this so if you noticed in in this it all sounds like it's everything outdoors but really wilderness medicine if you look at the first part of that it is a specialized medical training that is concerned with the medical care in remote comma wilderness comma expedition environments so the first one there is remote and and i want to help clarify something with 
with everyone. Wilderness medicine is not just meant for the outdoors. If you are on a boat in the middle of the ocean or in the middle of a lake, it could be considered wilderness medicine. If you are up in the air in a plane, it is considered wilderness medicine. Those those scopes play play or have a play in there. If you're out in the middle of the desert, that is wilderness medicine. So it can be outdoors. It can be in the heart of the woods. It can be on a plane, on a boat. Here's another cool thing. What defines that defining line between front country, front country and back country is if you are over an hour away from definitive care. Okay, Whether that's you're on a trail and the only way to get them to the ambulance is going to take you more than an hour, that's considered wilderness. If you are in a place where it's going to take you more than an hour in general to get to the hospital, that's considered wilderness. Now, just getting to the ambulance is not definitive care. Definitive care is done at the hospital. Yes, EMS providers, I myself am one. We play a huge role in that, but we are not definitive care. Definitive care is when you get to the hospital. So if you're more than an hour away from definitive care, then it is considered a wilderness environment. So that can look like in your modern EMS system like take ours for instance there are places where it's at least 20 to 30 minutes to get to the call plus time spent on the call plus time getting back that technically can be considered wilderness in the scope of practice and the legalities of it now Wilderness medicine is not recognized by National Registry. Wilderness medicine is not recognized by a lot of front country um, industries unless you live in a mountainous environment or an Austrian environment or places like that or a, a different country. A lot of different countries highly recognize wilderness medicine because of their skill sets. Okay. So. Saying all that to say this, we know there's different levels of um, responders and medical providers. So you have your people that are CPR trained, then you have first aid, then you have basic life support, which are your EMTs, and then you have advanced life support, which is your um, advanced EMTs and your paramedics, and it keeps going up from there, critical care, flight, paramedics, your nurses, your doctors, surgeons, those type things. Now, in the wilderness medical settings, you have a short list, but a very important list. So you have um, wilderness first aid. I'm going to talk a little bit about these. So wilderness first aid is like the basic wilderness medical training you can get, okay? It just helps you improvise a little bit and very basic. It's a 16-hour course. Okay, so wilderness first aid is is just that it is first aid level care, and then you move from um, that to wilderness first responder. I'm going to camp out here a little bit because wilderness first responder is kind of like the the bridge gap. So you get you dive into that pool of basic life support because you're getting like a basic life support healthcare provider CPR. You're now diving into anaphylaxis, um, relocating or reducing dislocations, those type things, um, traction splints, hypothermia. You learn triage. Uh, there's a ton of stuff you learn in there. But the wilderness first responder is strongly and very deeply kind of grounded in improvising and and this is where that modern day MacGyver uh, kind of aspect comes in because you're now learning to create a splint out of the stuff you have on you um, if you needed to make a stethoscope what could you use in the field in your hiking pack to make a stethoscope um, just to kind of hear lung sounds heart tones those kind of things um, nasal airway if you had to improvise a nasal airway what can you use to do that and do it properly now these things aren't just 
taught to to have a a hype these these are life saving uh, interventions that are are being practiced and are taken seriously so if you're just getting this to be a let me have my badge look at me kind of thing it might not be the best thing for you to get involved in because it's one thing to call the ambulance to a car accident it's another thing to have to call an ambulance, get a rescue team, get someone out there to a plane crash that happened two hours ago. So it's a, it's a whole different ball game, whole different level of intensity, whole different element factors, those type things. So I know it's a little extreme, but it is something that's taken very seriously. So you have Wilderness First Responder. It's a 70 to 80 hour course. It can be done over five, seven, or nine days. It just depends on if you take the accelerated one or if you take the full. So anywhere from five to nine days. Now, the five day and the seven day get the same thing that the nine day gets. It's just crunched and a little bit longer hours in your day so with that being said you are getting the same knowledge you're or being equipped in the same ways and you're going to come out of there drinking out of a fire hydrant per se now i will say this you're not going to learn everything you need to know about wilderness first responder in that class um, before that five to nine day class of wilderness first responder you also have two weeks worth of online courses and um, curriculum that you are taking and doing scenarios those type things so you have your 70 hours plus another two weeks on top of that 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 you're all getting crunched in so there's a lot involved in knowing this and this can be done from someone with zero experience to someone that has experience so the wilderness first aid is 16 hours no experience needed it starts you gets you up to the basic level wilderness first responder takes you to the next level Okay, now here's where it gets interesting. Wilderness EMT. So that takes you to the basic life support level. You're, it's the EMT level with the wilderness stamp on it. So you have the EMT course is about 270 hours long plus that extra um, 70 to 80 hours of wilderness first responder added to it. So now you're able to administer care at a much higher level, uh, more experience, more in depth on the human body and, and pathophysiology and, and all those type things, medical terminology, which is not really needed a whole lot out there unless you're doing a radio report or a handoff to rescue team or that transport team. But in that, the Wilderness EMT is a very high level certification because now you have all those hours of EMT, you have all those hours of improvised medical training, but you get to go in depth a little bit more because your scope of practice is more. So you learn to do different things within your scope of practice as an EMT. Now here's the cool thing. Wilderness EMT comes with the National Registry EMT. So you are a nationally registered EMT, and then you are also an internationally certified wilderness EMT. Now, as with the first responder, it's the same thing as a regular medical EMR, emergency responder. The difference is that defining line. Now, you can't practice your wilderness EMT um, scope of practice in a front country setting, and you can't practice your front country EMT basic in a wilderness setting. The reason being is the medical director sign off on both. You have to be working under a medical director in order to perform these things. Now, if you get signed off on one, on the other, typically your medical directors is where you're employed at. Um, on the wilderness side, a lot of times people seek a medical director to help cover them and be with them. Here at Wild, we have a medical director. And uh, we're looking for more medical directors just to kind of help broaden that. But we have a medical director slash consultant to help cover um, all the legalities, but also keep us accountable accountable 
and um, stay on top of everything when it comes to the wilderness medical side of wild. Okay, so you have your wilderness first responder and then your front country first responder. So that defining line there of, of remote or wilderness or expedition or over an hour to definitive care is your separating thing there because you have to be under medical director. Same thing with your EMT. Wilderness EMT is crazy because you learn a lot more because you, you're you able to do a lot more, okay? So now you go into wilderness advanced life support. This is an advanced life support level certification. This is the highest outdoor wilderness certification that you can get and but you must have a current advanced emt or higher paramedic um, doctor physician rn it must be advanced emt or higher in order for you to get the advanced wilderness life support training so that's another 36 hours on top of everything else that you've already done so you got roughly it so let's let's take this because you have to get one level to get to the other okay so wilderness or the, here's the cool thing real fast wilderness emt if you are an emt and you already have the wilderness first responder but you've got the emt after that then you can now bridge those two you can go take a bridge course to merge those and that's um, that's what I'm going to end up doing. I'm going to take a bridge course to merge those two because I'm currently a wilderness first responder. I'm almost finished with my basic EMT. So jump back over. So you have all those hours, 270 plus the other 70 or 80 for your wilderness EMT. So now you got to think in order to get the wilderness advanced life support, you have to be an advanced EMT. So you have another 200 hours of that training plus another 36 hours of the ALS side of the wilderness, wilderness ALS. So now you're able to provide advanced life support level um, care to whoever. So now when your rescue people arrive on scene, you're able to help administer IVs if fluids are needed. You're able to help do airway um, innovations, those type things. If the monitor's there, um, cardiac monitoring. As an EMT, you can hook up a 12 lead and you can transmit it. You just can't read it, per se. Um, but that's when you get in that world, I don't want to go into all the scope of practice because there's a ton that each level can do. Um, but your level progresses a little bit in each. Like for instance, the with the medical director sign off, as a basic EMT, I can administer epinephrine if it is someone else's epinephrine. So if you get stung by a bee, you go in anaphylaxis, you have an EpiPen, I can administer that for you. Now, as a wilderness EMT under medical direction, I am able to carry Epi as a standard in my med kit and administer the Epi that I am carrying. There's certain things like that that are, are allowed on the wilderness side that aren't allowed on the front country. And that's okay. There's different things, different scopes, but each level has different things like that that are able to be done. As an EMT, I can't do joint reduction if a shoulder is dislocated i can't reduce that if a finger is dislocated i can't reduce that as an emt but as a wilderness first responder i can i've been trained i've been taught how to do that that's just a little bit so each level like i said each level it goes up you have different things that you can dive into but um wilderness advanced life support is the highest medical training you can get for the wilderness expedition urban remote wilderness and it plays on your level of training if you are an advanced emt you will have the wilderness advanced emt level of training if you are a paramedic it will be the wilderness 
paramedic per se, doctor, wilderness, doctor, those type things. Um, so it will play to your specialty, your scope of practice on the front country, and it will be, um, you will be able to operate within those scopes and a little bit of more of the wilderness thing. Because remember, you're in a remote area. You are maintaining and stabilizing a patient where delayed evacuation to definitive care. So, I mean, there's a lot of things you might have to do to keep a patient safe out there. And some things, um, like for instance, as an EMT, I, I can't give over-the-counter medications unless they are yours. But as a wilderness first responder, I can carry those things like Tylenol, Ibuprofen, Advil, or sorry, aspirin in my med kit and administer them as needed. Um, so it's a cool world to dive into, but a lot of responsibility and a lot of legalities because with the wilderness side, you still have the duty to act, the Good Samaritan, those type things that you have to define and figure out triage. You, you have triage just the same. And triage in a wilderness setting could be just as catastrophic as a, a severe mass casualty triage in the front country because there's so many elements involved, so many elements involved that, that make it sometimes worse, but not always, okay? So with this, we're excited that we will be offering wilderness medical classes and as our level grows our instructor levels will grow as well um, so just another little thing there with the wilderness side if i'm a wilderness first responder i can teach wilderness first aid as an instructor wilderness emt i can teach wilderness first responder and wilderness first aid advanced wilderness life support you get the point Wilderness EMT, Wilderness First Responder, Wilderness First Aid. So each level you go up, you can teach. And then with that, there are so many different schools and people out there doing these trainings. We are not proclaiming to be gurus, but the experience we have, we want to pour into others and give that. It is a passion of ours here at Wild. We are... Um, most of our staff is medically trained in some shape, form, or fashion, whether it's just basic CPR or doctors. So um, some of our people that we have on standby are also military medics. I mean, we have a whole wide array of people here that will be helping instruct and teach and, and putting together these things. And we're not going to reinvent the wheel with any of this. We're just going to put our spin on it. We are going to specialize in specialty training that helps with all of this. But we're excited to dive into this side of it, okay? So with that being said, I need you to know that there are some very, very reputable schools out there. You have Solo um, Outdoor Schools. They are one of the, I do believe, the first and original wilderness medical school, the longest longest existing one is solo um, I currently hold a solo wilderness first responder certification as well as a wilderness uh, or wild med which is wilderness medical associates I, I currently hold one of theirs as well we love them great people looking at getting some instructor training through them as well but also uh, Knowles National Outdoor Leadership School is another reputable school we have not yet ventured with them, but we are planning to in the future. And um, we're learn not only learning our skills and sharpening our skills, but learning leadership from them and, and how they do it. Um, not Again, not to reinvent the wheel, but just to be another great leader in this field and another great educator in this field and learn different areas, different aspects, different ways of teaching, but also different um different criteria and different curriculum as well. It's all baseline the same, um, but there's some things that are different in each one. And you'll see as you go through these, I, I encourage you to go through those classes and then come back with us and, and check ours out. We'll be doing the same thing. 
Um, one benefit here is the location that we're going to be at is we're going to be offering it in a location that there's not a whole lot here. Um, so hopefully with this, we can bridge the gap in getting it into our area. But here's another cool thing. In teaching wilderness medicine, it's not just to educate people in wilderness medicine. It is to help bridge a gap between the front country and the back country. Right now, wilderness medicine is not regulated and it's not recognized by the National Highway Safety Traffic Safety uh, NITS, NITSFA and uh, the National Registry. I think I said that right, and I'm probably going to get flack from my instructor for forgetting that. But it's currently not recognized by the DOT and the National Registry because it's, it's, it's new, it's different, it's foreign, but it's also an international certification. You could get certified here in the state of Georgia, and this will be covered in Hong Kong. It's just It just is an international certification. So therefore, the regulations are a little bit different because some of the stuff, it it's just different. And I can't go into a whole lot of details because you don't want to give a whole lot away per se, but also I want to be cautious of what I say to someone who hasn't been through the class because it can blur some lines and raise some questions if you just hear, hey, Wilderness medical people can do this without knowing the full context of, of why and how and knowing that they are actually trained in that. So that being said, do your studies, um, do your learning, and, and look at those things. But we're excited to be able to offer these classes coming soon. Um, but saying that, we want to be an advocate. We want to help get the wilderness side of, of the medical field more ingrained into volunteer areas, search and rescue. It's, it's big in search and rescue right now, um, but you have other medical reserves in different areas that, that need that aspect of wilderness medicine. Because check this out, wilderness medicine also is relevant in a catastrophe or a disaster. Okay. Anything that's, um, consider a state of emergency, your wilderness medic medical certification is active and relevant then. So that is cool. So natural disaster, tornadoes, hurricanes, tsunamis, floods, earthquakes, you name it, whatever it might be, um, snowstorm, blizzard, you're eligible to and qualified to work those times and to be available as a resource for those times. So again, just getting it ingrained. But I think of other medical facilities and EMS departments where there are long transports or there are long response times. It will be nice to have people that are trained um, on a, a different level if needed to be able to help step in and bridge the gap. Um, you have volunteer firefighters, you have volunteer rescue, but you got to think the volunteers, they have full-time jobs too. So they may, at, at 11 a.m., they may be at work and someone just ran off of a bank uh, 30 feet down and off the side of a, a highway. And now the ambulance has to get down there. The rescue team has to get set up blah, blah, blah. You have to get someone down there, stabilize the vehicle, make sure the scene is safe, and now start working on the patient. So having someone who's trained in all of that already in a remote setting where definitive care is a long ways away helps bridge that gap. It would be nice to have a call for 911 saying, hey, there's a responder on scene that has the patient stable. Here's your vitals, blah, blah, blah. Now, 911 doesn't always communicate that, and that's cool. That's okay. But having someone there when we show up that knows what's going on, that's confident in what they're doing, and that has the ability to face any challenge, anytime, anywhere, that's pretty awesome. Now, don't be Rescue Randy and jump in there and just try to do something for recognition and end up hurting somebody or hurting yourself or forgetting the basics, your ABCs, your XABCs, uh, your life threats are the ones you want to address right away. That's class material, but 
saying all that to say this, I would love to bridge that gap. I want to be an advocate for getting the wilderness medicine more recognized, more utilized, more called upon, um, more of a tool. I would love to see more EMS departments train their people in wilderness medicine and that aspect of improvised medical care. It would be incredible to have a hospital EMS department say, you know what, just in case something goes wrong, I want to have that extra knowledge, so I'm going to go take this class. That would be incredible. And we're trying to get or trying to be an advocate to help raise this team. It's a vision of mine to see this world come together um, and have a, a, a medical director in every state in the United States that will sign off for the U.S. under the act uh, or under a wilderness medical provision. So it's a board of, of medical directors from all 50 states that will state and sign off on the wilderness protocol. That way they are active and they are freestanding and they are ready. Um, now, this will require a little bit more screening and application process for future uh, people being brought on board to make sure they're going to uphold that. But it's needed. It's needed. And then hopefully globally, if there was a global board of, of medical directors that could cover, or an international, sorry, not global, an international board of director medical directors that can sign off on all the wilderness medical protocol, that would be incredible. It's just visions. It's just dreams. It's just aspirations. So, I think that's how you use the word. If not, oh well, shoot me. Not really, don't shoot me. <laughs> but that being said, I, I am thankful that you guys are here, and I hope that I've helped clarify a little bit more with the um, wilderness medicine side of things. Now, there is a ton more to dive into. I just gave a very surface-level description and understanding to help someone who has zero knowledge of it understand what it is, to help someone who is looking to get into it know what they're getting into. So with that said, I'm going to just do a recap. Just remember, as a wilderness medical personnel, you're just a modern-day MacGyver slash healthcare provider in remote settings. There you go. That's, that's it in a nutshell. And the different levels are wilderness first aid, wilderness first responder, wilderness EMT, and advanced wilderness life support. Now, there are, um, through the international, it's an international training through, the, it's, a, it's a board certification, that's what it is. International board certification and it's a specialty certification, you can get a specific wilderness paramedic certification. Um, that is a very, very high advanced and specialty just for wilderness or just for paramedics, critical care, flight medics, that that level of training. It is still wilderness advanced life support but it is geared specifically toward paramedicine. So just wanted to throw that out there. If you are a paramedic, that is something that you can do, or you can just stick with the Wilderness Advanced Life Support. Go from there. But with that said, I, I just want to thank you so much for your support in WILD. If you don't already, Follow us, subscribe, click the uh, like on this video. If you look below in the description, there's a link to all of our other areas um, that we have, whether it's social media, podcast, you name it, it's on there. I want to give you a quick reminder of the FFM, the founding family, our financial founding member uh, opportunity is there for a limited time. Go to the link in the description below. Click on the very bottom link on that page, and it will take you there, give you all the details about that. But also, we are currently building some online tests, some online trainings, some online courses for you. Uh, some of them will be skills evaluations. Some of them will be 
full-length courses. Some of them will be just to help you introduce yourself to what we're doing. Um, but be looking out for those. A lot of good things are happening. Uh, finishing up with some other trainings, but you guys know that, and we will keep you updated. Thank you for bearing with us in this process. Thank you for your support in all that we do. Excuse me. Sorry about that. But I love you. Can't wait to spend time with you next time. I do believe our next podcast, we're going to be talking about vision. We're going to be casting some vision, and, and it's got some really cool wilderness stories to to put in, in with that as well, and that that might even end up being a two-part podcast. I believe that's the direction we're going. If it doesn't happen, it will be the next one. Uh, we are really, really wanting to go ahead and talk about vision and get that. You know, a springtime, it brings up a new kind of breath of fresh air. So why not throw vision in there and what that looks like and what it is. So until next time, we love you. We thank you. Stay true. Stay wild. You've been listening to Wild with JR. Join us next time for more insight and encouragement to help you live out your full leadership potential.